If you are planning to become a data scientist, there is some honest advice I wanted to share with you based on my 10 plus years of experience in the field. I'll be going over what are the pros and cons of getting into data science in 2024. And I hope that information will be useful for you because based on that information, you can make an educated decision that should you pursue a career in data science or switch to some other field. So let me first start with what are some of the challenges you should be expecting as you pursue a career in data science, especially in the current tough tech market. As you might already know, the tech market is pretty tough right now. It is difficult to get any tech job right now, but getting a data science or machine learning job is even harder, especially for someone who is new to the field. And the prime reason for that is that data science and machine learning, they're generally considered the hardest software engineering field to get into. Because you need to know a lot of things very well to be able to succeed in this field. For example, if you want to become a software engineer, whether it is a full stack engineer, backend engineer, or any other kind of software engineer, generally you need to know well the fundamentals of the programming language you should be using. For front end engineers, it could be JavaScript. For back end engineers, it could be Ruby, Java, or any other programming language. So generally you need to know that programming language well and some of the tools and libraries which are used frequently at that time. Once you have these two things figured out, usually it is considered good enough preparation for you to land a job in that software engineering field. But it is very different for data science because for data science, you not only need to know different kind of programming languages. For example, you need to know SQL, you need to know Python. In some cases, you need to know R. And then on top of that, you need to have a very good understanding of statistics and machine learning, data pipelines, and the cloud environment in which the code would be running, for example, AWS, GCP, etc. Now that is a lot of information to learn, especially if you are new to the field. And because of that, data science and machine learning are generally considered the hardest field to get into. So even if you think you have a modest grasp over all these concepts, and when you start applying and go to the interviews competing against people who have more experience, it is very difficult, especially for the newcomers, to beat out that competition. Because the topics they have to cover are very vast and very wide. By the way, to overcome this exact problem, I've created a roadmap on how to successfully crack AI, ML, and data science interviews. The link for that guide is in the description below and it is absolutely free of cost. The other challenge you would face when you're getting into the field of data science is that you would see that the competition in this particular field has been exponentially increasing over the last couple of years. In my experience in the field, there have been two distinct events which caused a lot of new people to come into this field, which increased the competition in the field. The first one was in 2012, when Harvard Business Review published an article indicating data science as the sexiest job in the 21st century. That led to a lot of people switching their careers and getting into data science, including myself. And the second event was when ChatGPT was launched in 2021. People were just amazed in what AI and ML can do. And that led to a lot of people abandoning their existing careers and getting into the field of AI, machine learning, data science. So even though in the current tech job market, there are a lot of layoffs happening and there is competition for any kind of software engineering jobs, but the competition for data science and machine learning, it is generally just increasing a lot more. And the third challenge you should be aware of is that employers generally have very unfair expectations for these data science and machine learning roles. If you look at some of these listings on LinkedIn, you would see that they are expecting knowledge on a lot of stuff, even for these junior role openings. And that is just not possible if you're coming fresh out of college or have just one to two years of experience. It is very difficult for someone to know all this stuff very well. So in a nutshell, if you're planning to get into the field, expect a lot of challenges. They won't be easy to overcome and you need a lot of persistent and a lot of commitment to get through it. But once you get through all these challenges, there are some good things which are waiting for you. If you become a very knowledgeable data scientist, then the kind of salary packages you would be getting is just mind blowing. For example, if you go on levels.fyi website and check on what kind of salary machine learning engineers are getting in some of the top companies, you would see very mind blowing numbers. And senior is someone who is considered three to five plus years of experience can easily get $400,000 plus per year. That is a lot of money 
even in the United States and even in the tech sector. And the reason is there are a lot of challenges someone has to overcome to become an experienced, knowledgeable data scientist and machine learning engineer. And a lot of people give up when they are going through these challenges. And that is why the people who emerge successfully on the other side get all these amazing benefits. Companies are willing to pay so much to experienced machine learning engineers because there are just not a lot of them in the market. And companies are willing to spend a lot of money on the AI ML so that they can set themselves apart among their competition. When I was in Meta in 2022, Meta had a hiring freeze on all roles. So they stopped hiring for all positions and there was just one exception to that and that was the role of machine learning engineers. Even when the company was going through financially difficult time and they stopped hiring for all roles, they still did not stop hiring for machine learning engineers. And that tells you that how much companies value these good machine learning engineers. And even in today's tough tech job market, when the number of open roles for any kind of tech roles is going down, if you look just at the AI and ML positions, you would see that there is an upward trend in hiring even in today's job market. So companies are taking back money from other sectors of tech and investing in AI ML because they see that as a future. So essentially all the challenges which I've explained in the first part of the video are acting in your favor once you become a little bit experienced data scientist and machine learning engineer. All those challenges act as a filtering criteria so that only people who are very committed and very good come across on the other side. And that is why people on the other side are very few and very much in demand and are actually paid very well. The most critical piece in all this is that since the amount of material you have to cover is very vast and spread across different websites and courses and books, there is just so much information that anyone who does not have the right kind of guidance just gets drawn into that information and very soon doesn't know what they're doing. To help tackle that problem, I've created that free guide which I previously mentioned where I've explained that what is the roadmap for someone who is a beginner can take to learn most of the skills which are needed to excel in today's data science and machine learning domain in the most efficient way. So in the guide I have described what is the amount of material you have to cover from which resource so that the time you are spending into this learning is very optimal and to the point. The link for that guide is in the description. It's absolutely free of cost so please check it out and also please check out this video where I have explained what are some misconceptions and wrong advice out there which basically trip and confuse the aspiring data scientist and I've shared this in the video so that by watching that you are mindful and avoid the common mistakes which a lot of newcomers make. I hope you liked the video. Thank you so much for watching.